Dr. Bright, we're getting close to the end of our time, but I want to ask you about the mRNA vaccines. They've been the enormous triumph, certainly for this country, um, of the pandemic. They are difficult to take around the country. And now we're learning that they may not uh, last, they might have enduring impact. We may need ongoing boosters. So when you look at this issue globally and you look at future pandemics, how do we address them? Do we need a different kind of vaccine for the rest of the world now? What's the manufacturing challenge? And when you look ahead to future pandemics, are we prepared to come up with universal vaccines or some other approach to pandemics? Well, we're a lot better prepared today than we ever have been in the past because of the technology and the innovation that we've seen in developing vaccine platforms. I believe there's a lot of power and opportunity in the mRNA-based vaccines still. It's an early iteration of this technology. It had never been used at this scale and had never been scaled at the, the volumes that we've seen. Um, because it works so well, um, it is an opportunity to continue optimizing that vaccine platform and other similar platforms that may not be messenger RNA, but might be using the same type of vaccine platform concept, such as adenovirus-based vaccines and other um, recombinant-based vaccine platforms. I'm a strong believer in these platforms. Once we've demonstrated that these platforms, such as mRNA, can make a successful vaccine um, that is safe and highly efficacious and protective and protecting people from being hospitalized and dying. And that's what we're seeing with these vaccines. Um, we can also see where they need to be improved. And so the duration of immunity is not as long as we had hoped in terms of antibody response, but they're still very powerful and durable in making this strong cellular T cell response, which is what's saving people's lives today. Can we optimize them to make a stronger, more durable antibody response? I believe we can. Can we optimize them to make a more broadly reactive antigen? So a vaccine that will work against more variants of SARS-CoV-2 or perhaps broader protection against all types of influenza? I believe we can. I believe it is the, the first step in opening a broad future for utilizing recombinant-based technologies and synthetic technologies such as mRNA and DNA-based vaccines that open the door to other innovations that will make the vaccines not only more durable, but we need to innovate them so they are room temp stable, so we don't have that super cold chain requirement that we have with the current mRNA-based vaccine generation. We can make vaccines that can be delivered orally. We can make these vaccines that are delivered through the skin on patches, so we can remove the needle and syringe from the process. We can remove the cold chain from the process. All of these are things that will make these new generations of vaccines more powerful, more accessible, more affordable, and easier to reach into more places that are traditionally harder to reach with the, the first generation of vaccines that require this cold chain um, and storage and, and hard to get into those communities. The future is bright. I'm very excited this technology works. I'm very optimistic about it. I know the scientists are all over it, not only in the US, but around the world. And I believe the next generations of these technologies are going to really open the door to improving access and affordability and thereby improving health around the world from many of the pathogens we're facing today.